Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and this is week six of the Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy course. Um, we're through to the final week, it's been a big course, so congratulations to everyone who's got this far. Um, we know it's been a lot of work, um, we know that it's been difficult to get right through all the reading and everything to this stage, but um, we hope that you've all found it very valuable and we've got one more week to go. There's quite a lot to cover in this last week, um, we were hoping it would be a little smaller but we have got quite a lot of information in it um, so bear with it there's a lot of good things in there you can always refer back to them later it'll always be available for you to access so don't worry if you can't get through it all um, and we've also got an assignment for you to do and a few other bits and pieces at the end of the course but you've got another two weeks, two, three weeks to get all of that done and get all the course completed. Um, so with me today is Martin Abiel. Hi, Martin. Hello. Martin has done a lot of the work in week six on the specific, on the sort of physiotherapy side of things. So on the specific therapeutic interventions and a bit on the technology. Um, so Martin, I was wondering if you would just Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you came to get involved with this course and maybe then just introduce um, some of the things that we'll be covering in topics three and four this week. Um, so to introduce myself, I'm originally from Belgium. I'm a physiotherapist uh, with specialization in neuro neurological rehabilitation, uh, mainly focused on adults, but then somehow got involved in working with children in Peru for a year and then a little bit in Belgium as well, experienced cerebral palsy. And then after I started working in South Sudan and Ukraine, also with some cerebral palsy children and more in general as well. Um, currently, I'm, I'm working in North Korea in BKK. Uh, I'm not directly working with children with cerebral palsy, but and have it for the last half year, I think. But I'm still interested, and maybe in the future, in your future, I'll be working with them again. So that's my very brief history. That's great. I mean, it's always great to have people who are really experienced in working uh, with children with cerebral palsy, especially when you've worked in so many different places um, and seen a wide variety of situations and contexts. So it's really good to have your experience. Um, so what are we covering this week um, in the specific therapeutic interventions and technology? Well, when it comes down to specific therapeutic interventions, it's mainly the focus is on, on which interventions you should encourage and which um, which general principles you can use in your treatment. Um, it doesn't go into every specific on which joint, but I think it is a good idea to have the general concepts ready and then you can use them creatively on each individual child and use your inspiration and use the child as an individual and include the family as well to, to make objectives and to make interventions that work and that are useful also in the longer time. So I think um, covering, so if we're just covering all the specific therapeutic interventions briefly, it's really useful for to do that because um, people may not be aware of everything that's available, of all the different kinds of interventions that are available, because I know um, you know, I don't have any experience, clinical experience of working with individuals with cerebral palsy, but in all different contexts around the world, there will be different therapies that are favoured in different areas. So, so it's good to cover this and have, have some experience of all the different opportunities that there are um, and that you may be able to use um, in, your, in the management of your child with cerebral palsy. Um, what can you tell us about technology and how and innovations in this sort of area? Well, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, ideas and there's a lot of very interesting concepts arising, especially if we talk about virtual reality and communication devices, but also robotics and treatment, which become a little bit far fetched and are a little bit more difficult to attain in different contexts, but are nevertheless very promising. Especially also because if you talk about virtual reality, you're not only talking about the very expensive headset, you're also talking about closer, closer to home settings like smartphones and tablets, which can be used for, for interventions, which can use, be used as by manual trainer, training or can be used in unimanual training in case of hemiplegic cerebral palsy. 
So a lot of these items can be used and at a relatively low lower cost. And this is continuing. The cost is decreasing, so the likelihood and the availability is then increasing as well. When it comes down to robotic treatments, it is still very, very futuristic, of course. Um, but nevertheless, there's a lot of robotics. Well, also the virtual reality and the robotics have a big effect on the neuro, on the neurological aspect and the plasticity of the brain. So there's a lot of promising promises, but it's very hard to give direct uh, guidelines on what to use, what to recommend, because all of them are mainly still experimental. Yeah, I think it's again, it's more about just awareness, isn't it? It's it's just having a having a quick read through these things to be aware of what's going on in the research. It's all in the research stages, isn't it? Um, um, yes. Apart from. That is true, that is true, but it doesn't mean that like some of the, the very, very fancy robotic treatments you can apply at a smaller scale with yeah. lesser, with lesser, um, lesser resources as well. Yeah, absolutely. So okay. it's, it's good to be aware of these things. And, and even if we can't use them right now, we will probably be using them in the future. So having this knowledge now is preparing us for the future, which is, which is always very useful. Mm -hmm. And I also hope that maybe there are a lot of ideas around the world and maybe in the forum we will see some ideas of, of physiotherapists or other people who have interesting ideas, who have read something or have seen something that might be useful elsewhere as well. That's, yeah, that's good. It's always good. These discussions in the forum are always very, very useful. It's, a, it's about knowledge sharing. Remember, everybody's got some knowledge to share and some unique experiences to share that we can all learn from. Um, so, yeah, we encourage you to share those in the discussion forum. Um, so, Martin, are there any um, other messages that you have for the participants of the course? Having, having been through the course yourself, do you have any sort of and with your experience, do you have any sort of messages for the, for the participants of the course? Well, I think it, if it comes down to me, I think it is everybody. You see it also in the forums. Sometimes they're very creative ideas, very interesting ideas of people. Um, but very often it also comes down to general principles such as encouraging self-initiated uh, movement and then changing the environment where the child is living and then task specificity, which are all general principles which can then be applied to each individual child, and which has to be done a little bit, yeah, depending on the context and depending on the child and depending on the family. But I'm sure that with the, the, the different yeah, topics that have been covered throughout the weeks, um, most of the, the participants, they paid a lot of attention and have actually put thought into reading I think they will be able to apply this, at least in a broad sense, to improve the, the, the lives of children. Especially because in the, a lot of contexts, a lot of children, you see them, they're moving around a lot, so you only see them a few times. It's only like a stable context where children come back and come back over the course of several years. But if you see a child only once or twice or three times, it becomes very difficult and you have to prioritize very, very hard and you need to have this knowledge to advise properly and to actually be able to get to tell something to the parents and to discuss something with the parents so that the child can yeah, can live it's a, with a good quality of life. Yeah, and that's what it's all that about. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, that's what it's all about, is improving the quality of life of the child with cerebral palsy. And I hope that we've managed to um, achieve that on this course. And I think, you know, many people... And we're hoping that many of the participants, many of you, the participants, will take away some of your knowledge and improve the lives of the children that you work with. Even if you see them once, as Martin says, you know, sometimes we don't see them very often or regularly, um, but we can make a difference in that one session, um, which is great. So also this week, we will be covering orthotics and assistive devices assistive technology um, that comes before the specific therapeutic interventions and innovation and then after all of that we'll have the assignment um, so there is an assignment to do for this course you'll have a couple of weeks to do it um, so you don't have to get everything done this week which is good um, and I think that's about it so the final there'll be a final quiz that you'll need to pass and when you've done everything you'll be able to download your certificate um, from your 
learning dashboard from the certificate pages. Um, so all that remains to be said, I think, is enjoy week six. Um, stick with it. You're nearly there. And we will see you in the discussion forums this week. So thank you very much for talking to us today, Martin. Um, it's been thank a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad we managed to talk to you in North Korea. It's been great.